Hi all. Okay, this is the London Chess Classic FIDE Open, which uh, started today. Uh, it's very, it's quite interesting if you haven't seen this sort of thing before in round one of a nine round Swiss. You've got uh, some very, very strong grandmasters playing players um, around my FIDE rating in, in the first round. So um, there's quite a big difference here. There's like a 500 gap. And on some of these other games, you'll, you'll see that 500 point gap here. Uh, it's quite a large open. Um, there's approaching 200 people in it. Philip Toza seems to be playing a 2669 on on board two. Um, I'm quite good friends with Philip. Um, he's he's um, a very very good player, and he's also got a very strong brother who's an IM, uh, Richard. But uh, Philip's um, playing here with the black pieces, and seems to have a very good position. So let's have a look here. Um, try and let's get an analysis uh, board up. Uh, so we'll just get an analysis board next to this. And uh, okay. So I think he's on board two of the feed open, playing this, the the second seed. So Gratchev two six six nine. Um, so bishop c2, it looks as though white's going to play queen d3 just to create some threats or weaknesses basically to provoke black into playing g6 maybe. If there's a threat of bishop takes f6 and queen queen h7 mating soon. So okay, it's a it's a tricky position. The clocks are roughly balanced at the moment. Um, so I'm hoping the board previews are okay. And um, so on board one, uh, we have um, uh, the top rated player is 2670 in this FIDO Open. There's no one above 2700, but still, these are quite mighty uh, FIDO ratings to have to face if you had to play them uh, for most people. So here, um, it seems a reasonable position for White. Let's see, did he try for a C3 Sicilian? Okay. And we've got kind of it looks like a nice position out of the opening for white reasonably uh, solid um, with a6 maybe this c4 later uh, let's have a look at this game here it might be a weakness later uh, so let's have a quick look If uh, rook c8, and we try and use this c4 square, maybe a maneuver like this to get onto c4 later, it might might be uh, something. Um, I'm not sure about b5 because white could try and use that c5 square. So um, okay, very very interesting. Uh, actually, let's just make some space over here. Um, so let's see on board three. Uh, if we go onto event highlights, board three, Sutovsky. I think he's. I, I think he's a book writer. Two six five seven. He's playing a two one, three nine. Uh, let's just load the top five up here. And focus on these top five boards. Gary two six five six playing against Quinn. I think I've played Quinn in one of my leagues, the Middlesex league. I think I, I managed to beat. Queen, I think, what was it a draw last time I played him? Uh, I've had some tough battles, I think, with Quinn. Um, Madawiki, I've played before in his, he was like for playing for Wood Green. I've played him, I think, last time I, I beat him actually, Madawiki, uh, in club matches. So I, I know some of these people playing these strong uh, GMs uh, in this in this round one. Uh, so let's have a look at this position. Uh, so actually, that's kind of avoiding this bishop c4. It is it is a popular move? Well, let's get that again. So we have a bishop c4 move for the second move. Bit of a surprise weapon, maybe, from the GM to play this bishop c4 and d3. I guess it avoids things like the martial gambit. 
it's a solid position for white. A5 is he trying to just weaken these uh, light squares? He's back going to play at a6. Okay, accepting the double pawns is, is a dynamic decision actually here to play knight d knight here just to accept the double pawns, but it gives white a stronger bind over that d5 square. If we just copy this game here. Uh, so we just see what's happened here with white accepting the double pawns in that situation. Um, I think GMs do push for dynamic, you know, positions and play. And this is a very dynamic decision, just to accepting structural damage. But we're getting a, a sort of Moroxy bind on this d5 square. So how would black actually break this bind? Uh, it's quite difficult, I think, to break it. Will white continue with knight g3? And then maybe bishop e3 because the knight g3 would support the e4 pawn and bishop e3 might support c5 later to try and create a backward pawn on the d file um, so yeah I, I this is one tournament i was really torn to sort of should i be playing in it or should i be commenting i'm really happy that the icc is showing the top five boards uh, i think there's a much greater emphasis personally on the fide open this year because there's no London Classic as in classical time control it starts next Wednesday as rapid games so I think these are actually potentially a lot more interesting to try and comment on uh, the pace is going to be much more relaxed um, and you know I know some of these people as well so okay um, so let's I think Philip Toza let's have a look at Philip Toza's uh, again so Philip Toza uh, let's minimize. I'll just try and get to it from here. Okay, let's have a look what's happened here. So Bishop C2 is preparing this battery on H7, and I know it's crude, but how does Black actually handle this? If ever G6 is played, well, maybe uh, that can be got away with. Actually, I was I was checking out a classic Capablanca game earlier this morning. Capablanca against Jaffe. I don't know if um, if anyone's seen that, but Capablanca got this battery and provoked, provoked Jaffe to play g6, and then later Capablanca crashed through with a, a rook sack on e6 because it was really smashing through on g6. I was going to show that game, maybe maybe another time. <laughs> um, but uh, here it seems you know Black might afford g6 in principle if this bishop is keeping the structure here solid. But I don't know, something like knight e5, and then we're on g6 again. So I'm not entirely sure how black copes actually, just with this simple idea of queen d3 here. It's a bit of a tricky position, I'd say. Um, let's just see how this, this was arrived at again. Quick revision here. Check. So it was a queen's engine with bishop d2. And. Um, no isolated pawn really for white. He's avoided the isolated pawn. No, he's got an isolated pawn now, pardon me. Bishop here. And bishop going back. I mean, it seems like a solid enough. If you look at all the moves individually, it seems solid enough. I'm just wondering how. I mean, how does black out? Maybe just knight bd7, maybe that's enough. And white actually, wh where is white playing actually for this queen d3? Maybe it's, it's harmless if, as long as the knight there, knight e5, rook d1, maybe it's not that bad. There's the possibility of bishop, no, bishop a4, rook c1. Or just rook e1 and knight e5 at some point. Okay, so let's see. Um, I don't know. I think white stands a little bit better here. He's using a lot of time, actually. If this is the clock, oh no, no, this is just. Uh, pardon me. Seventy-one minutes left and sixty-five for Philip Toza. So. Um, okay, how can Philip arrange a defence here? It's, I don't know if it's quite tricky. Uh, but what is the actual threat? Is it knight e5 and knight takes d7 potentially? If if we get this battery here, 
it seems as though there isn't much pressure on D4, though the blockade looks okay. So let's let's see. Um, uh, this is the Sutovsky game. What's going on here? So was this? There's a Grunfeld. That's what main line ish. Bishop e3. Actually, this is a bit interesting. So f5, very aggressive f5. So and blacks avoided the exchange of queens there. So what does black actually, it seems white here superficially is doing quite well. I can't see I think an issue potentially with the white position actually the Queen's now protecting c5 so you might imagine knight e let's have a look at this copy this position for a moment you might imagine here that the bishops also controlling this diagonal that knight e5 might be useful at some point I don't know just to get rid of this defensive knight would that be handy for black to just continue then with bishop d7 and just doubling on the F file. It's quite an unusual, I, I'm not entirely sure, quite an unusual pattern of play, I think, uh, from black. It's, it's an aggressive use of the Grunfeld to sort of get this F file pressure, but white has conceded that E5 square. If we look at no possible exchange sack here, which is probably quite crazy to consider, I don't, I don't think this, this will just drive that back. It's, it's no big deal here, surely. I don't think that's a big deal. Well, there's Bishop H3. That could be a nuisance possibility if timed well. Maybe just Bishop E2 is, is just to avoid that possibility. Bishop E2. Possibly. Uh, let's have a look at the other games for a moment then. So Quinn. Now this this looks like a, a quite a, a dramatic Sicilian defense game with h5. So I was just checking this out on the iPad earlier. This h5 kind of prophylaxis against g4 is is quite a trendy idea I think in recent years against this English opening setup. So trying to discourage g4 from white. And it's been played a number of times. Um, queen f2, okay. It looks as though black has quite a decent position. And he hasn't used that much time, funny enough. You'd expect the 2656 to be playing these moves more quickly than the than Quinn who's about 21 uh, you know 30 50 so it's interesting but um okay so what is white potentially threatening a disruptive Bishop b6 so the Queen's also placed for Queen g3 looking at g7 that might be quite handy because it also pins the d6 pawn that might actually facilitate something on c5 like bishop c5 if the queen was on g3 we'd have that pawn pinned to the queen and there's no knight h5 of course here with that that pawn there so this could actually be a potential double attack kind of threat queen g3 looking at g7 and looking at bishop c5 here i guess knight e5 maybe that's not such a big deal if ever that happens but looking at g7 if I don't think black would dare castle there as a bishop h6 so what does actually black do here let's let's give black a move like bishop b7 I mean to stop castling to disrupt castling bishop b6 or the queen can just be left on f2 so black can't castle because of bishop b6 but how would white actually progress here
And she goes, mm, let's check this out. Bishop takes b5. It's got Bronstein's in one of his amazing games, has once played like this. Bishop takes b5. There's a general idea to get loads and loads of pawns. I'm not sure how convincing this is here. There is knight c5. Mm, I'm not sure. <clears throat> I, I feel I was just feeling quite concerned in this position playing against someone over 2600 you, you must wonder what sort of they're thinking about what resources they're seeing all the time uh, I mean there's, there's actually lots of options for white here um, and one would start questioning I suppose Bishop b7 versus Bishop d7 like which is potentially better I mean castling with the pawn on h5 looks particularly um, appetizing something like Queen g3 immediately seems to threaten Bishop a6 but I suppose Knight e8 is possible and Queen looking over there Knight c5 or Knight mm. yeah Okay, so uh, <clears throat> let's have a look. Board one. So board one of the Fidia Open, twenty six seventy. He's the top seed. So, ah, oh, I think he might be going in for this kind of plan to reroute the knight here. If we just check this out again. That c4 might be a slight weakness in White's position structurally. It's difficult to shake off that. It's a fundamental kind of feature of the position here, this c4. So you can imagine knight c8 and then possibly knight b6 to c4. It looks a bit slow, but on the other hand, is White trying for a king side attack in the meantime? So f5. I don't know if this might be creating some weaknesses uh, or. Does black simply consider playing f6 once f5 is played? So let's see, f5 is it looks as though that's a major threat. So f6, and does white have a prospect of an attack here? I mean, I guess queen h5 and knight g6 is what you'd you'd be sort of tempted to do queen h5 for knight if that actually does anything I don't know though queen e8 and then we're covering we're covering g6 and if we can just use this e file and the prospects of just getting this knight round to c4 here so I think black's playing quite a solid and provocative game but there's a prospect of that c4 square use hi entertainer 1995 um, okay uh, hi all so uh, yeah this is the London classic the fee day open section is still on the classical time control this particular year I'm not entirely sure why um, the elite section was rapid this year but um, that starts next Wednesday I think uh, so but the feed open I think it's quite fascinating the rating differences and see seeing how they play um, the, these strong GMs how do they uh, well statistically outplay they usually statistically outplay people like 500 points lower so I've, I think this position I'm not sure why whites attack in this position uh, so I, th I think f6 might be a reasonable move but it's it's being pondered it seems what black actually does here um, oh we can use a forcing move I guess bishop 
of G3. I don't know how annoying this is. If that's protected. I wouldn't have thought it's that useful here. Although if we went for that, no, I don't know about that. I'm not sure. I don't think there's anything majorly clever going on here. Knight g6. I, I wouldn't have thought that's like playing with fire here with this kind of thing. No, there's no need for this. I, I think just simple f6. I know a few guys think there's an issue with f6. Is there? Is there an issue with f6 in this position? Just black playing f6. I don't know how quickly you play this. It looks like the sort of routine thing you might want to do. It does mean that any time Queen E8 is played, we're, we are looking at a Queen on H5 as well. If the Queen ever wants to pop into a, uh, H5, but let's let's imagine Queen H5 isn't played. It's why it has weakened these dark squares a bit, and there's actually now Bishop G3 potentially as a threat. To, and if the Knight retreated, Knight takes F5. So I think black's been a little bit provocative here for white, you know, saying to white, I could come and get me weaken some squares. You've already got a weakness here, but if you want to like create some more on the king side, then go ahead. Another possibility with this knight actually is maybe knight b5 for rook c8, just hitting c3 directly instead of trying to perch a knight on c4, just that c pawn. Could be attacked, pressurized with rook c8 and knight b5. That might be quite annoying. I'm not sure I'm liking white's position that much. Um, I'm trying try not to be biased here with the rating differences, but it looks objectively as though white's worse. Uh, now, here, okay, this battery idea, let's examine this again. So, this is on board two. This battery coming up looks a bit mean. And knight c6 instead of knight d7 is interesting. Putting pressure on d4. Okay, very interesting decision there. So, what was the idea? I think knight b4 was the idea. So, if queen d3, black's got time for knight b4. So, he doesn't ha he didn't have to support. I suppose rather passively, you could say the knight on f6. So with knight b4, that's that's okay. That's solving that problem for a moment. So white just responded with knight e5. Maybe knight takes e5. Oh, knight b4 now. Okay. I wonder if the bishop can just be put on b1 though mind you it's, it's getting ready for a d5 blockade swap if the bishop moves then this knight could come to d5 so let, let's say uh, the bishop moved here I don't know if there's time for this bishop b7 so if a3 knight d5 it looks like um It's 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 such a common conceptual position this this isolated queen's pawn type position, but who's actually better in this scenario? We try the battery queen d three. There might be time for knight takes c three here. On bishop takes f six, we've got knight takes b one. And on B takes Bishop E four. So I know this battery is that dangerous here for going for Queen D three. So this kind of scenario, it's possible. I think it looks possible, plausible. Bishop B seven just to plot the knight on D five. Hmm. 
so that looks that looks plausible. So on board three, let's see what's happened here. Oh, it's B5. I didn't expect this one coming. B5, very aggressive play from Black. So Sutovsky. Let's have a look at this. What's happened here? So Grunfeld played very, very aggressively with both F5 later <laughs> here. And now there's B5 coming up. Amazing. So the bishop did go to E2, maybe avoiding any exchange sack possibilities on F3. But B5, wow. What is, what is this about? I wonder if D5 could be vulnerable. So C takes. Then what? Bishop b7, just hitting d5 with the rook and the bishop here. Now, if white trying to just routinely castle. I wonder, bishop takes d5, is that playable? Does that actually want to do that or play rook takes d5? But probably rook. I'm just wondering about well this position or this position. I wonder if it really matters. Say bishop c4 pins that bishop. Or is there something horrible happening here? With some sort of exchange sack, like rook takes f3, knight e5. We're actually threatening knight takes f3 check, winning the queen. Maybe that's bishop h6. There's always queen d5 here anyway. I wouldn't have thought it's quite aggressive idea b5 though. I wonder what's what's going on here. Is it around d5? It must it seems logically that it's undermining d5. So take I think bishop b7 looks plausible. Oh hang on, hang on, the rook takes d5. Forcing move immediately on c1. No, no, the bishop's practicing c1. Forget scrap that. There's also bishop c4 anyway. So scrap that. It has to be surely bishop b7 or knight. Maybe a knight move. I don't know if there's any time for knight f6 or knight b6 though. Bishop b7? I don't know. What do you guys think? This position. What's, what's black up to here? Bishop B seven I don't know if white's any worse here. White seems solid enough. There seems to be a lot of loose pieces lying around. In fact, C five seems to be a problem. Just in theory anyway. Hmm. So B five. Okay, that's complicated. What is the queen actually doing on A three? I mean, it's putting pressure on C one. It's looking across. The best I can come up with at the moment, Bishop B7, unless anyone can see something stronger. I 
I don't know why. It does seem a risk. Out of all the GM, of all the GM encounters so far, I think the GM's taking more risk than the other two games. If we look at board one and two, I think. Oh, what's happened here? Let's go. Let's go back to board one. All right. So bishop g3. Forget f6. Bishop g3 was played. And then we had queen g. So he's avoided playing f6. Wow. That's interesting. Is this playing with fire or is black gonna I don't know take on h four? Really? Yes, he has taken on h four. Now this prospect of f six is dangerous. I can't see a, an amazing tactic for black. F six now is played. Okay, he got rid of the bishop though. Subtle improvement on what I mentioned. I thought just f six immediately was okay here. So black elected to get rid of this knight altogether first. It couldn't have stepped back because there was knight takes f5. So he got rid of the bishop for a knight first before playing f6. Maybe that is an important difference. One would assume a 2670 GM thinks that's an important difference anyway to, to get this position and then play f6. So the, the knights, these two pieces are going to be better than these two maybe he's saying he wants some simplification. I guess f5 is a continuous target now with say queen d7. We can look at f5 and tie the rook down and this knight can come here and start tying pieces down to c3. So both of these knights can be actually very very annoying here. Knight takes f5, aggressed you knight and h7. I don't think knight h5 was a problem. No sorry that no it's not a problem here because we've got queen takes d8. Sorry yeah no he played f6 but um, I don't think knight takes f5 is a threat at the moment. I think it's just these knights are going to tie down White's pieces to c3 and f5 respectively. This knight coming to b5, this knight just staying put there and queen d7 and then possibly a rook coming to c8 and maybe a rook coming to e8 later just automatically threatens thing like knight takes f5 if, if white's got stuff on the e file. Okay so knight a3 that stops knight b5. Knight seems a bit not ideal on a3. So what about just rook ac8? That will prevent c4 for a moment as well. This bishop seems to be a kind of bad bishop at the moment. It's got no targets, no easy targets. These pawns on light squares away from this bishop. Yeah, yeah, this, this knight manoeuvre either here or here to c4. Yeah, Grest Street, yeah. Game frame, hi there. Hi there. So um I don't know if White's been a little bit outplayed. I think this bishop might be a miserable creature soon with these pawns all on dark squares and nothing much on dark squares to attack later. It depends how black's knights get entrenched here. In fact, yeah, Grestu Knight Knight so mentioned to D six, that's a better rook because it hits also simultaneously f5 and that c4 square. So putting pressure on f5 is actually a very simple plan which coming to think about it is more concrete than just trying to perch a knight on c4. Trying to just win that f5 pawn would be horrible. A horrible thing to do. I don't know if white ends up playing g4 and creates even more weaknesses around this king.
Hmm. That could be tricky. It looks as though White's position is going to be reeking with um, weaknesses uh, in a few moves time. If he has to play g4, if this knight maneuver is really on the cards, you know, in conjunction with queen d7, a few things we'll be looking at. Oh, hang on, concrete move here. Forget long-term plans. It seems an immediate double attack on on c. A weakness of the last move has been pounced on. Basically, if we look at the weakness of the last move theory here, and look at what was played, weakness of the last move. It wasn't protecting c3. And black's just pounced on that directly with queen c8 hitting f5 and c3 immediately. Whoa. Oh dear. <laughs> it does seem to win a pawn straight off the bat. No one mentioned it. <laughs> you guys not mentioning it. I didn't mention it. But <laughs> looking at longer range knight plans, when there's an immediate weakness to the last move to be exploited, this knight a3. Double attack, ouch. What does white do? The queen can't double defend here. It's on a dark square uh, on h4. Seems away from these guys. White's losing a pawn. What could, what's the best white can do here? Let's say bishop d2, knight takes f5. Does that matter? Queen, I can't see the compensation for the pawn here. Ouch. And the knight's got a juicy e4 square coming up. Yeah, I, 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 this weakness in the last move is a lot more concrete than any abstract notion of the position here that we might have had. It's just, just the look at the last move. We can c3, fine. f5 is already slightly vulnerable. Queen c8 just seems to go to underline that just very clearly. Queen c8. Isn't white just losing a pawn? This pawn is protected. This is the only loose piece. I don't think there's any tactical magic based on e7 being a loose piece here. We can try. No, hang on, hang on. I'm not sure I entirely believe it after queen f4, though. For example, queen takes c3. We've got a rook infiltration like this. To get to c7 this might be very very dangerous so have a look at this position how dangerous is this or is there just knight c6 knight a c6 and we're on d4 here we're protecting e7 this knight's not amazing and there's also queen b2 as well could be a nuisance It's okay. These ghosts of threats causing knight a. What white had to move his knight. If I suppose if he moved to d2, there's still the same thing. Queen c8. I and mean, if he didn't move his knight, you know what, what is he doing with these pieces? So he moved it to a3. And now queen c8. So is white getting blasted off the board all of a sudden? We can just try and make it into a pawn sack, but it's not. It's not an amazingly convincing gambit. Oh, Queen G. I don't think this helps for Bishop H6 because there's always Rook F7. If we have a look at that, Queen takes. We've we've got. Um, I think at minimum we've got Rook F7 in this position. That F6 does facilitate Rook F7. Yeah, it looks as though this is horrible to face Queen C8. Oh. Hi, WTPP, Paluk. Um, everyone. Okay. Uh, I don't know. I think. Um, by the way, if you do like this sort of live commentary, this is from a feed I open. So I think this is actually a unique experience as far as um, 
streaming because usually you're, we're seeing GM versus GM. So in this realm one, we've got a massive rating difference to witness here. So how how weaker players are outplayed by these mighty like uh, 2600 GMs. So they're not ordinary GMs. They're very very strong GMs. A lot of GMs, you know, rated below 2500. These are the top seeded GMs in the feed out open. Okay, he's he's made a pawn sack out of um, Bishop D2. So Queen C8, Bishop D2. Does this actually? I'm not sure that's sufficient actually that's quite clever because we've got Queen G4 Queen Queen G4 or not Knight E7 I think we can can we not take this pawn I think we can take this one. No, no, they wouldn't get GM norms if they won. But I think if you beat a GM, it's like forever after you can say that you beat a GM. It would be an amazing achievement. <laughs> but to get a GM norm is a different kettle of fish. You'd have to uh, beat loads of them in the same tournament, I think. So Knight takes F5 has been played. Ah. Uh, And there's Queen. I don't think Queen H5 looks at D5, maybe just G6. I don't think Knight G3 here because Queen takes D5 is check. Check. But maybe just G6. It's a pain. This pain. His positions. Not looking that hot, but let's have a look at some other games now. Board two again. So, Rich, uh, Philip Toza. So, Knight E2 has been played. Oh, that's quite interesting, actually, as well as a concept. Uh, if we had a look at this Knight E2, possible he's ruled out any Knight B4s. So maybe the idea of knight e2, where it holds up f4 as well. So queen d3. I was just wondering though about um, later knight. I think this is too slow. There's always the f4 square to use, and that actually hits g2. I don't think the knight's heading like that with queen d3 because there's knight f4, and then we're on g2. It looks fairly nice for Philip Toza here, this position at the moment. He seems to have quite an idealistic d5 blockade. Let's go back to board one. Okay. So knight takes f5 was played. Well, I don't see a big deal about playing. Um, I don't see a big deal about playing g6. Actually, I know we're weakening some dark squares, but the knight is quite nice, surely, on f5 here. I mean, you might think there's a tactical problem, but you know, the queen supporting at the moment. I mean, we could also just play just in case king h8. Why isn't a knight sort of doing a nice job on f5? I mean, I guess you know, we could consider retreating the knight, um, but why it's quite nice on f5 unless we're running into g4 later? So we move the queen, okay? Let's say this. I don't know about g4 later. It just creates more weaknesses for white. Yeah, 
have a look at board three for a moment. Uh, so on board three, this B5 move was ignored, it seems. I wonder if there's an element of playing on trust that the 2657 GM can play these moves and think, give the impression it's all being calculated. And I don't know, the opponent didn't want to take the B5 pawn, but maybe taking B5 was technically best. Um, on the other hand, sometimes it is wise just to ignore that sort of thing uh, to play more unexpectedly. Let's see. So Bishop B7, though. The thing is, this structure is under fire with a move like Knight B6 would hit both the pawns and Rook F8 would logically double the rooks. It's under fire this structure, potentially. But c5 would be um, inhibiting black's activities, surely. With the queen on a3, and bishop and rook looking at c5. I wonder here, given it was ignored, what about just black potentially playing b4, just uh, not sort of marking out some dark squares? if white's not going to take on b5 now because that would shield the c5 pawn if white does take here okay d5 can drop immediately and actually we're looking at queen takes a2 now as a prospect and i i guess if something like Rook c2, maybe rook c8, just with the idea of c4. We've got basically a passed pawn here, which could be a nuisance, especially if we got to c3, it would be protected by that bishop there. Hmm. Yeah, okay, let's, let's sort of go back to board one, go back to board one. So white's still thinking here. Um, yeah, how can he get get enough compensation for the pawn? Well, has he blown his big opportunity to crush a twenty six hundred GM? Uh, if he gets an inferior possession here now, pawn down, it's less likely. Hmm. Okay, I don't know how we get any chances from this position or um, anyway, let's have a look at board four or five for a moment as well. So we've got five boards to really check out from the top of the field open. Oh, this is looking very, very interesting. What's happened here in this position from earlier. So we had this position from earlier. Okay, so let's get back 
get a review of this game. Queen f2, so the knight went to b3. So black's changing the structure here. Some sort of b file promise. If we play this, the knight takes c4, protecting b2. On D six. <clears throat> Why do I think there's an element of Petrosian in, in all this when a stronger player plays a weaker player? It's like the attack is encouraged because it just creates a weakness on C four here. Was the attack already too optimistic to play Knight C four or something? What what does Black do about that? C4 D5 oh, there's some horrible tactic here or we'll just people just nice blockade on D4 Which would always be threatening to like take and maybe take this later. And we can always play b3, that's the another snag about this. If needed to queen b7. I think black really needs to get this other rook in the game though, and as soon as he castles then there's trouble. Probably on the king side. Actually, there's always bishop e5 as well, skewing queen and rook. So I don't know, knight, yeah, knight d2. I don't know if it's like some sort of theoretical dream to use this b file. It looks as though white's pouncing on all the squares quite quickly. So d5 maybe just taking. If knight takes what about this. There's a friend of Bishop E five potentially looking at G seven. I think the rooks just connected though is significant here. This is a right pain for black. I don't think there's a promised dream of an attack. I'm being negative, I guess. Um, but where is it? Uh, can black make something out of this? Well, bishop f5. The king in the center is a massive liability, though, surely. Do you want to go back to game one for a moment? Whoops, we'll go back to game one. Oh, what's happened in game one? Some stuff has happened in game one. Oh right, the knight just retreated. So queen f4, no g6. The knight just simply retreated. 
queen d6. Can the queen not just be evicted with um, queen d d8? Looks interesting and logical. So I'll, I'll try and give more delay on a particular game so we're on the same hymn sheet uh, from now on. Okay, so we'll stay on, on this one for a few minutes, uh, for at least five minutes, say, before shifting to another board. I think Queen, oh no, Queen D8 looks fairly obvious. Bishop f4. I don't know if Bishop. I oh, Scott color. Bishop f4. Okay, so Queen d8. Bishop f4. If we just take, and then we can just move the rook here. Is it a big deal? Black's pawn up. Um, Black's got knight g6. Maybe later. Or knight c8 to come to c well to come to c4.
Oh, hang on. So rook e8 has been played. Sorry, no, no, quite a bit's been played. Pardon me. Oh, let's get back to the. Uh, uh, just, just rook e. Okay, forget bishop f4. Just rook e8's been played. So I was just I was just checking something. Uh, I'm, I'm with it now. So rook e8. Um, okay, why not queen d8? I don't I don't think it was a big deal queen d8, but uh, I'm not really convinced it was a big deal. Uh, Yeah, I suppose the queen's looking at c3. So the GMs doesn't really care about getting the queens off. Uh, now let's let's say the rookie eight, rookie one, oh rookie the other one's being played. Rook e one. I wonder why this was needed. Now we can't move the knight because d five drops. I think I preferred my queen d eight at the moment. From this evidence, or oh, maybe Queen C6 is the idea. Oh, he's played Queen C6, yeah. He's going to evict the Queen. It's no big deal. This rookie won. He's still keeping an eye on C3. So the Queen, if he doesn't want an exchange of Queens, let's go about here, for instance. F4 or G3. Do we go about to G3? Keep an eye on I. I view on them that also rook f6 it looks at g7 I, I think he had so he has played queen c6 queen g3 uh, now what Queen G3 has been played. Maybe knight, uh, knight here. It's a tempo gain once it reaches h4. It's hitting the queen. Mind you, when it goes to d6, there's rook takes f6.
<laughs> spectators. <laughs> oh dear, we're going to start using the word spectators here. Blacks, Rook, and Knight are spectators. Uh, are they? <laughs> it can come to b6. It doesn't have to go this route, interfering with f6. We can go to maybe a4, actually. Knight. Yeah, I don't know, or c4. Uh, yeah. By the way, um, on a general other topic, just for a moment, have any of you ever bought chess ebooks? Uh, <clears throat> out of interest, how is the ebook chess market doing? Do you think? I'm thinking of doing an ebook at some point. Uh, Surely black is better here. Yeah, he's a pawn up. He's a pawn up. It would be a miracle statistically if 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 the player with white even drew today, especially uh, being a pawn down here against this um one of the top you know rated GMs in the Fedia Open. It's funny, you know, a lot of these GMs we haven't actually haven't actually gone through any of their notable games ever on the channel. But there's a lot of you know GMs above 2600 that must have played some pretty amazing games at some point. Uh, Maybe, maybe tending to overdose on Kasparov, etc. happened here wow how did this happen so we had um, this position knight e5 bishop went back knight e2 bishop a6 back in a moment Let's see, Queen D two Let's have a quick copy of this game.
weeks of the last mo being pounced on at the glet c6 knight c6 but uh, i would have thought the blockade Check. here isn't too bad for the moment it looks kind of solid ish for black pretty solid but he's lost a lot of time on the clock Philip Toza so he's lost a lot of time on the clock getting this position he's down to apparently 18 minutes against 50 I can't see anything that bad about Black's position. So he's doing, I think he's doing well. Let's imagine, I suppose, Knight F4, Test Knight F4. I'm not sure what it does, actually. There's Bishop A2. I think black looks good here. It's just this clock situation. I think I'll be a bit concerned about. What do you guys think about black's position? It looks very neat and tidy and um, nice blockade on d5. So if there's any shock result out of the game so far, I think it could be this one. No, but there was another one which looked a bit precarious um, as well for the GM actually at some point. Uh, oh, H3 has been played. Okay, there's board three. Whoa, board three, a lot of activity on board three. g5 looks as though bishop g4 or knight e6 is interesting attacking the queen oh, bishop takes d4 hmm well, bishop takes d5. Actually, I've got a new mouse actually today, just arrived. I could plug it in if this continues. I'm going to get it actually, just in case my new mouse has arrived. One moment. Okay, um, oh, there, there is bishop. No, there isn't. <clears throat> it 
it's a Microsoft Comfort mouse. It seems a pretty decent size. This one I was really quite concerned about the size. <laughs> Actually. take my C5 I'm pretty sure that looks at E7 as well I don't know it looks as though is Sutovsky taking risk or something his position looks to be um, not amazingly uh, solid but um E6 or something? E6. Or, oh, no, just just takes on A2. Why not just take it on A2? We've got this past the A pawn supported by the rook. device driver software My mouse is in real time. <laughs> Seems quite comfortable. Microsoft mouse. Uh, all right, hang on a sec. Unique features of the Microsoft hardware device. This might take several minutes. Oh dear. I'm not sure I want to do that quite now. Maybe okay, I'll put it on the right here so you don't have to see that. Um, downloading the Microsoft Mouse and Keyboard Center. <laughs> How long is that going to take? I don't think I need this keyboard center business. I think the mouse is okay as it is. Uh, I'll take the risk. <laughs> Seems okay. reasonable size happy with it so far in the first few seconds I think I knew from the first few minutes of this other mouse I tried recently it was too small and I didn't like it from the outset so 
so let's see uh, this one's good from the outset so let's see board one uh -huh. let's go back to board one Queen went back. We had knight c8, queen g4. Check. Yeah. So, okay, it looks as though black is soon to play, unless there's some miracle tactics knight c8 to e4 knight d6 to e4 toby back yes the london chess classic this is the fide open it's not the um the master section this year is a rapid play it starts next wednesday it's like a rapid knockout uh which i think a few people have been uh moaning about so yeah it's the feed out open this is the actual feed out open so i think knight d6 to e4 uh is uh interesting as a plan again now how can white create some nuisance in this position for black ah yes that is a fighting move h4 of course here Possibly knight d6 anyway. So h5, we just move this back. We're just coming into that e4 still. We can put a pawn on h6, that could be handy, I suppose. g6. I'm I'm much enjoy streaming on YouTube than anywhere else. Gets to be a video after. This is my favourite streaming platform for me personally. So h5 I think just nice f8 and then um, yeah we're just coming to e4 so okay well, white's been a bit outplayed here slowly so board two let's have a look at board two again it's down to nearly like 11 minutes soon we just have 11 minutes on the other hand, he's got a nice looking position. Oh, uh, hang on. Is there any naughtiness on bishop takes g7 here? Oh, man. Oh, what about bishop? How can Philip do this? Bishop takes g7. Check. This looks vicious. Oh, don't tell me he's not f considered this. Check. Oh, this looks too dangerous. Bishop G6. 
which now threatens rook takes e6 for knight g7 yeah I don't know I think bishop takes g7 and black's not solid anymore because it looks horrible bishop takes g7 looks as though it could be end of game pretty soon after that hate to be pessimistic but it looks as though that's a crushing attack because we've got one two three I mean we've got loads of pieces on on the Check. rampage here Check. two pawns immediately for the bishop and after something like this okay actually okay king e7 has to be proven G five check. I guess it has to be proven that black's getting crushed here. One check. Is, I suppose it's natural to take check. H six here. King E seven. And if the king can just run off, then that'd be great, but it's not gonna happen, I think. Uh if it can run off maybe just white just ignores that yeah, maybe it's on sound bishop takes king takes is this unsound check could be check bishop f5 Stops the king moving around because bishop takes e6. If we get bishop f5 here. Hmm. This position. Check. It's queen g3. Check. Holding the king there. No, I think we just get slaughtered here. Just take. Check. Just sink a rook. Check. Check. I'm getting this position. Check. Starts to be quite nasty. Right. What do you guys think about this bishop takes g7? Do you reckon that's going to be played? predict to move 50 points if you can predict the next move it looks as though white's all set for bishop takes g7 what was the point of getting the knight here if it wasn't for bishop takes g7 but is there some counter amazing tactic black's got with g2 coming up I wouldn't have thought there is Bishop takes g7. So eerie nightmare. You think Bishop G7 is winning? Yeah. It looks it looks as though at minimum there's like a perpetual check, check. bailout for White. Check. Because he's always got check. Queen G3 over here. If check. He wanted. Unless we got E5. No, because check. Always play like this. Check. And material back. Bishop f5 just exerts more pressure. Mm. This does seem a critical position to analyze uh, for us as well. Just to see what, what's going on here. 
Um, if rook g8, does that promise anything? We're on g2 actually, threatening things on g2 here. Ah, uh, potentially. Is that so clear? Is it? Bishop takes here. Now we wouldn't want to take like here, I think. No, I don't know. I don't know what's going on there, actually. No, I think that, that's interesting if black can use that G file, because the queen is on. He hasn't done that. So he's avoided all this, yeah. Rook G8 would have been pretty good there, maybe. So let's see what's happened. So knight g3, knight d7, just knight e4 after all that. Yeah, what might get involved if it's on sound potentially. Uh, so he just played knight e4 in dead. He's just looking at that d6 simple chess rather than going into the complications. If you can just mark out d6, so it takes takes. It looks as though the you know the queen potentially is in the wrong place. But where can we put discover the attack on the queen here? We can play knight f6, but then maybe knight d6. And we've got bishop b7. Looking at g2. Oh, it's bishop e4. No, it's not bishop e4. Oh, knight e4. Okay. Isn't it an idea to sack the queen with queen takes h6? Mm, I wouldn't say in this position just yet. Um, but I guess it could become an idea. Under, under the right conditions. Can my energy engine check bishop takes g7? I can use the ICC engine maybe. I'm hoping this, well, I haven't tried this before. Am I about to kill the broadcast? Let's have a quick look at this. Analysis. I'm a bit concerned about doing this. Here goes. The engine is giving knight e4 as about equal stockfish 2.3.1. Knight e4 equal. So black's doing okay at the moment. It didn't really rate bishop takes g7. If we just go back here. Bishop takes g7, it was indicating king takes with black better. Check. Check. King f8. Queen takes h6. Check. King e7. And now it doesn't really mention my bishop g6. It was mentioning bishop e4 here. If bishop g6, well, let's say check. Check. Knight 5 to f6. Apparently black's doing okay there. Off to knight five to f six. Let's go back here. Uh, it's something like bishop g six. We just um, okay. We don't take it. We just play rook g eight. And black's better. So apparently there was nothing in that. There was nothing in that. Black's actually. I wonder if I can stop this. Yeah. Oh, okay. So that didn't kill the machine or the broadcast. That's cool. So I can use the stockfish engine on the ICC here without killing anything, apparently. That was stockfish. Oh, so let's go back to the game thing. So it was um, knight e4.
I don't like to consult engines that much. I think it's more fun just to try and enjoy blunders of analysis. It's entertaining. <laughs> Sometimes. But that was a critical moment, so I suppose it was more justified there. But so knight e4, apparently, anyway, it's about equal this position from a theoretical point of view. But from a practical point of view, um, Philip's um, a bit short on time here. I haven't got the latest Houdini. I, I know they claim it's 50 points stronger, but um, do we need something 50 points stronger? Weren't they already strong enough for analysis of games? Uh, I'm just wondering. <laughs> Sorry, did I did I just murder the stream when I was doing that? What happened? Did I just interrupt the stream when I was doing that analysis with Stockfish, or was it okay? Did anyone experience any problem there? I've st I've stopped it now. I might try and contact someone about this uh, stream if one moment. By the way, um, Saturday is my cinema night. Um, I am off uh, at about in an hour, so I hope this is good fun anyway. But uh, definitely, you know, for other days I'll be streaming later. And actually, some of the rounds start at four thirty p.m. Um, no, but I'm hoping if this is enjoyable, there's it's a nine round feed out open. Uh, So, but I'm I'm gonna have to go in about an hour. Cinema. <laughs> so, uh, okay. Uh, but um, I think this is interesting to kind of speculate what happens in these games. Uh, Is is why it kind of lucky that there's no discovery on this queen here, or is that is all like intended that this position is is perfectly safe? Uh, it looks it looks like perfectly okay, except for knight f6 might be a concern. Then we have knight d6. Then we got bishop b7. And then, okay. Oh, sorry, sorry. The latest. Oh, what's happened here? Knight takes t. Oh, bishop b7. So he did take, and he played bishop b7. So he's threatening now. Maybe something. Knight f6. Maybe. F3 was played. So he's safeguarding g2. Rook d7. Ah. Now that he's safeguarded G two, I I wonder about this sort of sneaky f business to put pressure on this diagonal. Knight D six would start putting pressure on the diagonal and Bishop A two, Rook A D one, change of plan. 
but with this configuration this looks quite effective to just we're we're neutralizing this diagonal I think this might be an effective switch of plan so on on the top right board to the left to the left the slider on the top right board to the left You, you want the slider to the left how, how do we I don't know how to move the slider to the left <laughs> is that important no I think this one needs to be on the right um, so that should have been on the right I agree there uh, this is the analysis board this is the current position now The, the other board this this is definitely the latest position it's it's to the right this is the position it's that's correct I believe I mean I can there's a there's the official website as well uh, yeah this this can't be to you know this can't be to the it needs to be to the right yeah so Knight d6 has been played Queen c5. Check. Check. Okay, so say king moves. Hang on, we've got a problem here with queen d3. coming up I think any g6 there might be knight takes f7 winning e6 later Hmm. Okay, so we've got this move. And I want a queen d3, crude, but what do we do? Possibly check out f5. I have a problem. The knight takes f5. There's all sorts of possibilities here. Knight, knight f4. Okay, if we just take this for a moment. Check. Get loads and loads of pawns. Check. But White's King could be this. Oh, this one as well. This, White doesn't have to go in for that anyway. So F5. What would we do if F I don't know, Queen D3 is that that big deal? I don't know, if F5. This 
Let's play bishop e4. Oh. In fact, you could argue this is black's best piece just to get rid of. Um, so I suspect he just wants to leave black with a bad bishop endgame of some sort. If he can just take on d5 and then actually seize the c file, actually, he can quickly seize that c file with tempo. So if we imagine f5 here, bishop takes, bishop takes, right c1. This knight's a bit of a pain. In fact, where does the queen go without incurring structural damage? If we play queen takes, queen takes, bishop takes, we've got rook c1 again. This is a right pain, this position. We can start, we can just double rooks, go to c7. So is he just wanting to just get rid of the knight? Simple. Just wants to get rid of that knight, no? And then just use the C file. Change the plan here, because Black's rooks have neglected the C file. It's like this kind of pretend threats against the king, as though, I don't know, there was a lot of um, things to consider there. But White might be switching to the C file with the knight on D6. Oh no, an exchange sack. Ah, oh, this is very committal, isn't it? If this was played out of um, concern about that. I suppose rook takes, queen takes. Hmm. Maybe just bishop takes again. I just go here. Uh, is that enough? Let's have a look at um, game one again for a moment. Uh, okay, we won't touch the slider, so I'll try not to touch that slider because that could cause an issue elsewhere. Let's just look here at what's happened in the game. So, white's pawn down and looks to be. Oh, that's reinforced the knight against c4. The knight's fully reinforced. In fact, knight e6 to follow, maybe, if needed. Okay, that's not looking too pleasant. Uh, in fact, let's play rook f1. Here. My double clicking issue seems to have disappeared with the new mouse. That's good news. For some reason, White's made this whole thing a pawn sacrifice. It was a two pawn that could be very significant later. Right. 
Right, he's played that. Yeah, it looks as though this is just unpleasant for this ape horn. The rook just cheekily just standing where it stood originally just is very useful here. So white's why did white have to lose the ape horn? I think this is all a bit nonsense. Let's just put this through an engine, this B5. I think a bit of bluff here in this game. The engine reckons in this position, if you're taking the pawn from an engine point of view, it's one and a half units to white, approaching two. Bishop B7, castles. Engines really like this for white. I think if Bishop takes D5, ah. Ah, yeah. In this position, can you spot a crushing tactical move for white, which the engine indicates has been hugely better for white if this had happened? I'm just so I'm giving you this quiz based on stockfish analysis. White has a crushing move in this position. Can you spot it? This could have been a GM scalp in theory. Something to bear in mind, maybe. I'll, I'll stop the analysis before it kills my machine. But there's a there's a move which could have been played. Oh, <laughs> ah, might have given something away there. Uh, Are you with me on this position yet? I might have accidentally implied something about this earlier position. What did white have in this position if you were playing white? Oh, you saw the engine line. Did you? Yeah. <laughs> Are we actually seeing the engine line? I didn't know it was like invisible. Was it visible? I thought it was underneath. Just checking, is that really visible if I go into the analysis tab? Ah, oh, Muppets, is it? It's displayed at the top. So if I click start, it's displayed at the top. Oh, it's displayed at the top. I see, yes, very clever. <laughs> yeah, G4. Wow. Where's the rook going? So, uh, I thought there was an element Sutovsky was taking a risk. Just intuitively, compared to the other games, it looked as though this Grandmaster was taking some sort of risk with b5. So if this really was the case, that he was going to do this. But why, what did, so what did White play, you wonder? Probably just trusted him, just castled. But even here again, we had surely... you know, taking, because if rook d5, surely we've got bishop c4. So we still had that same pattern here for g4, maybe. We we had the same thing here. I don't think it makes a big difference. So was this all a big bluff? So anyway, white just ignored the c takes b5 possibility. I mean, I can check, just to make a sanity check here, with the analysis right again c takes b5 now also it's mentioning rook b1 now rook b1 as you can see here rook b1 so c takes b5 here king h8 still better for white okay we'll stop that so let's let's go on from um so in the game we saw knight g5 and Black's probably doing, I suspect Black's doing quite well now, undermining the structure. Yeah, Black's now equal. And actually, after this, in fact, now Black's mass massively better 
after this black actually takes advantage the knight's protecting the queen just winning that pawn and winning the a2 pawn and of course black's better now but it seems a little bit of a bluff there's a, there's a fine line there the whole thing being a bluff isn't that cruel so <laughs> he's used his 2600 rating to create a bluff the whole thing tactically if you can see through it and see these amazing resources uh <laughs> of course engines beat gm so i guess that's no surprise that an engine would find that um quite quickly c takes b5 and g4 So we're just in this game now with white just losing that a pawn and it just seems as though that there was um this problem now isn't it in fact if we have bishop b3 you can imagine bishop b3 then that will guide that pawn down the boards along with this one. Uh, that's a bit. That's a bit sad. Um, I suppose you could say. But let's see what. So what's happened? Okay, some more moves in this game. So from copy game. Okay. So actually bishop d5 taking e4 attacking the rook and winning another pawn is it so he's attacking the rook he's got the option of winning another pawn which would restrict the king it's not a major pawn in its own right but it restricts the king so if we had a king restricted we could potentially just bring our king up um but you can imagine also the pawn coming here and the bishop there is unfortunate oh. hi hi there <sighs> so much for the guess the move quizzes with this engine analysis show i need i need an option a user interface option to hide that thing at the top <laughs> man what's going on here oh this is interesting is it finished is this game finished oh no 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 it's still it's still we've got a live game a hack attack of some sort maybe I think g is it g5 here just is that dangerous We'll just open up this um G file. Well there's C three is on the night and threatening the knight B three. 
Well, she takes is on, is on this one. If we play king takes, we've got takes, and we've got queen d. I don't know if Quinn's managed to get some counterplay against this GM opponent. This looks interesting, to say the least. If we go back. There was queen takes c3 threat in there, no knight takes c4. Wow. Jim on the defensive. Position Queen G five. Oh, the Queen's always got F eight anyway. So G six or Queen Queen F eight. Check. Well, there, there was the threat of um, Queen H eight. Check. So c3, oh, there's knight takes e6 here, threatening mate. That's quite quick. If taking. Check. There's rook f8. Oh, there's rook f7. Check. This just gets dangerous Check. again. Let's have a look here. Oh, he's played rook f1. He's dragging the queen back a bit passively. It's not on d4 now for c3s. I wonder about knight takes e6. In this position, looks dangerous. Check. It, this looks very, very dangerous. Rook f5 or rook f7. Check. Just to win the queen. If king g7. Let's play check. check. And then king. No, that looks pretty bad. Knight takes e6. I don't know what would happen after knight takes e6. I don't know what you guys think about that. And no, I'm not using an engine. There's nothing at the top. <laughs> I'm just thinking knight takes e6. He doesn't play it. Okay. Check. Check. Okay, so if king f8, we've got knight takes e6. Check. It's very, very clear cut, isn't it? If king h7, rook f6. Isn't that a shame? Oh, that's very, very clear cut. Oh, that's crushing. In fact, he's not even winning the rook. He's winning the house. Check, isn't he? Because check. Check. And well, you know, check. Like this horrible. Check. Gruesome. Check. Uh, let's see. Could Black have done better earlier? He seems to have some sort of promising position. Um, Check. So we had this um, continuation here with rook f1. We put some analysis on this. No, black was busted there apparently. Plus eight. And if we go back, was there any chance earlier? Me. 
as soon as black played h4 was he doomed or something to f5 if he didn't play h4 technically it looks oh, bishop c5 and what's the idea so f6 f5 taking queen c5 taking d4 hmm. okay so he started going downhill when he played h4 apparently as soon as he played h4 valuation shifts down and then when there's a pawn and it's plus three now. Engines didn't really didn't like this position at all. Plus five, plus nine, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Auction house bidding is going on here. Sixteen, plus sixteen. <laughs> uh, apparently that wasn't the most accurate. Okay. Check. So um, White uh, won that here after Queen, after Rook F1, yeah, we'll stop that. So Black actually Check. resigned in this position. Oh, that's a shame. Black changed the structure to be aggressive on the B file. White just did that and carried on with his attack oh well so one of the top seeds is through this GM Garamin so that was on board four so let's go back to board one. Oh, black won that he's winning the exchange what happened there what disaster was that So he got his knight to e4. Rook f1, knight d7. b5. Ah. Oh. Yeah. There's a point to getting a knight on e4. It's not just pretty on e4. It actually does stuff. Quite a lot of squares covered. So, yeah, white was going downhill there. This bishop couldn't help any of that on the dark square there. So, let's see, Philip's game. Philip toes up is on over here. And he'll st he's the still playing exchange down now. That looks fairly uh, exchange with pawn. Okay, get back to that in a moment. Um, let's just put this away. This Quinn game. Uh, rook b eight. Oh, this this pawn is very cruel here so black won this uh, let's let's just put this on see how black just won it that was quite abrupt after these are all quite quick finishes after so it wasn't just winning this pawn it was restricting the king so two pawns up and a restricted king now this back row is a major issue that's horrendous if taking them would be one but how do we how does white actually get out of the back row issue he just goes into an enormous pin 
horrendous for bishop b2. So that was that one. Uh, put that one away. So, okay, they've been wiped out. Um, they've been wiped out. The uh, bunnies are getting wiped out here from these GMs. Madueki. Okay, let's see what's happening on this one. Oh, this is quite well advanced. <laughs> uh, oh, black is a rook down and still playing. So there's something interesting about this on board six. Um, G4 that really restricts F5. Python grip, Karpov. Ah, gaining space on both sides. Mighty grip on the position here. Whoa. Ouch. Is it this E5 business? He's threatening mates instead of taking here. Fair enough. Again, threatening a mate with rook h3, rook h2. Oh, so there's going to be rook d7 as soon as that bishop takes. Black might be overloaded here. Check. You, you two. Let me just take it. Uh, you rook d7. Cool. That was brutal, actually. If you look at this strangulation of this game from the earlier position, I don't know how many of you'd like to play black in this position after <laughs> this, this position doesn't offer an enormous amount of counterplay it would seem superficially here just to get the full horror of it should we flip the board so <laughs> if you were playing black would you be a bit worried here because <laughs> there's no f5 break uh c6 just weakens b6 uh these knights don't seem to have any squares. So this, this looked like a bit of a passive position. And white's actually opening up the game against the king here on this diagonal, the way he played it. Uh, with that move f4 coming up. Wow. This is actually threatening knight f8 double check and queen h7 mating. So how many of you would like this position with black? You haven't lost any material, but it looks dead. <laughs> check. If he had taken, actually, that's mate. Check mate. Because there wasn't that many choices. The 
game still going on or something? Is it finished? No. Let's put that one away. I assume the clock's stopped there. That's gone, isn't it? For black. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll get a confirmation on that. It looks as though Black resigned there. So the Tozer game is of interest. Now, the exchange down for pawn. Sorry, what happens? So, when black gave up the exchange, queen f2, pin, first thing bishop h7, check. Okay, going after the a7 pawn to create weaknesses. Uh huh. Can black consider taking on B2 here? Nope, because of the back row check. Bishop's holding H7. Uh, so this looks like a nasty pin. Queen B8. If that's, I don't know. Useful. So board one, the GM one. Board two, this is the game still in progress. Board three, the GM one against the 2100. Board four, the GM one. Board five and six, no, board six, the GM one, I assume, against Medewaki, yeah. So it's boards, the game's still in progress from the top six boards. And now boards two and five. On board five, the GM has two connected past pawns and the rook and pawn ending. If you want to quickly peek at that. Uh, so we'll close this one. And we'll look at a game we haven't actually had a quick look at before. It's this Wallace against Bartle. Bartel. So the GM's got these two connected past pawns. It looks a bit miserable um, here, to say the least. Uh... Okay, but um, so the Philip Toza game, Queen B8 has been played. So if that forces, it doesn't necessarily force Queen D8, but if Queen Knight E7, no, oh, Queen E5 seems to force the Queens off, nearly. Oh, there's Queen. Oh, there's Queen H4, I suppose. Was rook? Oh, rook d1. Yeah. Mm. So I have queen d8. I wonder what happened on. Queen D eight. Uh, 
Oh, maybe just bishop. Yeah, just to play rook c1. Oh, in fact, in fact, there's another idea. Might be six. We've got rook e6 here. No, that's nonsense. No, I don't think that's needed. Bishop e4, just for rook c1. Anyway, so I hope that you got something out of this. I don't know, uh, kick out of this live business. I'm going to be going soon. Um, hope if you like the video, please do like it. Yeah, we're up to 22 likes. Um, so I, I should be checking out games tomorrow. If you enjoyed this, come along. Um, About the same time, I think tomorrow two thirty or something, three o'clock UK time. So I think Bishop E four. Just just play Rook C one here. This isn't, isn't not very nice to have this pin, and draw this pin. I'm here for a, a few more minutes. Um, so we were looking at the top six boards. There's only two left in progress. One, one. This rook and pawn ending of board five looks really um, all over, really, because okay, for the moment there's a break on. If we have a look at this rook and pawn ending briefly on board five. For the moment, White's holding up a4. Maybe, uh, oh, maybe just rook f5 to b5, then a4, b3. I think rook f5. Oh, it's White to move. I don't think um, these pawns are going to come down at some point. But a4. They'll just gain in strength. Uh, oh, uh, Phillips resigned. On this board, Phillips resigned. Um, let's check an engine view out of interest then. What would have happened here for, from an engine point of view? Well, it's plus three on queen d8. Oh, it's mentioning bishop e4 actually. So if knight e7, rook c1. Oh, now we're threatening, I suppose, bishop b7. So if, if say, a5, bishop b7, that pin's just horrendous. So Philip resigned there. Um, if queen d7 to try and stop bishop b7. I don't think black's going anywhere in a hurry. Uh, F5 threatens to kick the bishop off the diagonal. So I guess that's why the engine is recommending F4. So if F5, we can just put it on F3. There we go. King F8, Rook C7. We're starting to win material. Bishop c6, and there's rook d7. Or, no, bishop, oh, bishop d7 coming up. That's a shame. I mean, I think Philip had a great position earlier. If we go round about here in this game, I think black was absolutely fine for a long time. At the point you gave up the exchange, um, let's have a look at that point you gave up the exchange. 
So bishop e4, he gave up the exchange. So what, what was the evaluation technically here? Apparently, I mean, but it's sort of grovely to play, but queen c7, apparently, so as you can see, it's better for white taking that c file. Oh, bishop c2 is also threatening maybe queen d3. Rook c7, say queen d3. Oh, there, there is actually a mention of knight takes f5 here as well. Knight takes f5, I think, was mentioned. Check. Check. I mean, even this, yeah, was possible uh, theoretically. Uh, so I guess Philip started panicking maybe about his king safety. So he gave up the exchange. Uh, and what's better? Right. Yeah. I think I'm going to. Stop that. Uh, so that's the final position there. This just looks horrendous, actually, just for rook f5 to b5. I think I'll just play rook f5 here with black to b5. Oh, I just played b3. That's even simpler, maybe. Oh, b3. Okay, thanks, kid. Um, could he? Um, if uh, every time we try and you know, we just play a4 here and it, the king could come up I mean so I suppose uh, this has to stand guard on, on this mm. yeah just still or here for b2 and rook c1. I think rook f5 now. Oh, I just played rook c8, rook c7. Right, so b2 and then just rook c1. The king gets out of the way. B2. There's rook D2. Just rook C2 then. Rook C2 to stop rook D2. Then, then we just play B2. And rook C1. I think it's pretty much over. It's minus, oh, it's about minus seven, as you can see, and minus seven. Yeah. Rook c2 is apparently a good move. That seems fairly logical. It's, I think it's pretty unstoppable to play b2 now. And rook c1 just, just wins a rook. So I think I think that's, that's kind of convincing if the engine's agreeing there. That's like plus seven. If the rook moves off, let me just move this pawn. Oh, 
or or just play rook c2 in fact um probably as well no maybe so what's actually playing on here It should be tougher pairings at the top tomorrow. Uh, more closely matched the feeder reins. So no surprises on, on, on top six boards so far. I think I'm going to assume Black's won that because I can't see anything. So, um, oh, okay, is he going to, so he's played king h2, so rook c2 looks completely crushing. If we just, okay, I'll show you that again. Here, the engine's in the king. I think rook c2 is the move here. I think we've got the threat of b2 and rook c1. We're at minus eight, it's unstoppable. So rook c2. And b2. Okay, uh, yeah, not too much tension and drama, I think, in this position is going to happen. Uh, mind you, I've got a bit of cold tea to sort of finish. Uh, Let's review how did white get into this mess? Let's go back. Review this game quickly. If he'd taken, he would be losing his bishop, I think. To c5. And this is some little trick here. Queen makes these it might be. Anyway, he played knight d five. Check. Adventurous King there. Wow. Wow. Just leaving the Queen hanging here. That's quite fun. <laughs> wow, that's that's really crushing, isn't it, because of this check here. It forces Queen F one. Check. So, uh, blimey. These poor. 
pawns. Check. Got the queens off there. Yeah, you got this winning rook and pawn ending out of it. So anyway, uh, actually, um, Black did resign. So I'll just show you the final. That was it. Black. I'm uh, sorry. I mean, White did resign. Thanks. All right. Maybe see some of you tomorrow. Thanks very much. Comments or questions on YouTube.